Second Advanced Mathematics, Lesson 105. Hey, remember last, uh, yeah, it was last week, it was uh, Lesson 101. We were talking about ways to solve a system of three equations, and we learned that Kramer's rule uh, could a handle a three by three determinant, and we started solving for x with like this crazy set of variables. We had a numerator and denominator, right? And we learned about how to plug in the values for each one. And then we learned that to solve the determinant, you had to like write extra rows and follow this pattern. It works, but I'm gonna tell you what, mathematicians were thinking there's gotta be an easier way. And that's one thing I really love about being a mathematician um, is that we're not sitting around trying to make this complicated. Quite the opposite. Mathematicians for hundreds and thousands of years have always been focused on how can we make this easier. So I appreciate today's lessons because today's lesson because it was another attempt by mathematicians mathematicians to try to make things easier, to come up with a different way of doing things so that it wasn't such a hot mess to try to solve these systems of three equations. So that's the goal of today's lessons. We're still trying to solve a lesson of three equations. We're still using determinants to do so, but we're trying to come up with a simpler way so we don't have to do all of this crazy schnizzle. This method is called expansion by cofactors. Okay, it's another way to solve a system of three equations and what the math gods are helping is that it's another easier way to solve a system of three equations. Um, in order to wrap our heads around it, we need to come up with a couple new words. Basically, well, let me show you Let's work from our first problem. We have a system with a system of three equations that we've reduced to a determinant. Three, six, five. Okay, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve this determinant. Now, the, there are some interesting ways to do that. Well, it's a long, weird process, but the first thing that we have to do is learn how to calculate what's called the minor. Of the, of the determinant, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna make it smaller. And the way we do the minor is we pick one row or column This is one of those definitions that makes zero sense in words. We're gonna pick one row or column and we're gonna cross it out one at a time. Let's just start by doing the, picking out one element. What we're gonna do is say, we want to find the minor of seven. So what we do is we say we cross out the row with seven and we cross out the column with seven. What that does is it leaves us with a smaller matrix that now looks like this. Two, two, six, five. Do you see how by crossing out the row in the column that has seven in it, we've found another one? This is called the minor of seven, okay, in this matrix. This is the minor of seven. And if we do one more thing, if we give it a positive negative sign, and the way we do that is from a checkerboard. 
that we can develop. The rules are very simple. For the checkerboard, we use the same number of elements as in our determinant, and we start with a positive in the upper left. This is a three by three. So I just create a checkerboard pattern. And then when I'm solving, when I'm creating the minor, I just choose the plus or minus sign off of this chart that corresponds to where the number is. So in this case, my seven is up here, the middle of the top row. So that means, whoops, sign. I take this minus sign and I put it right there. And this now has a special name. When you combine the minor and the plus minus sign, this is called the cofactor. And we just did the first example, example 105.5. Oh, I'm sorry, 0.1, okay? So this, we haven't figured out how to use this yet, but we're just using the vocabulary. In order to find a minor, we have to pick a row and a column. That or will make more sense later on. But for now, don't worry about that. And we cross out the row and the column. This is the element that we're creating the minor for. So the minor of seven are the pieces that are left. And we put them into their own determinant, which PS is much easier to solve, right? This does not require all those zigzaggy lines. And then in order, that's the minor. And then if we give it a sign as well, which in this case, seven is in the middle of the top row. So we create the checkerboard. We always start with a plus here and then just create a checkerboard pattern that matches to the size of our determinant. This was a three by three, so this is a three by three. Then I find the sign that corresponds to the same place my number is coming from. In this case, it's a minus. So we put that minus with the minor and those two pieces together are called a cofactor. We need to know how to make a cofactor in order to do the rest of this expansion by cofactors, but now we know how to find the cofactor. All right, so we're making progress. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna learn how to actually use this cofactor to solve a determinant, again, without having to make all the lines. Is it easier than making all the lines? I don't know, um, but it's another way, okay? So that's, that's what we're hoping that the mathematical geniuses that preceded us thought, you know, maybe you'll think this is easier because you don't have to do that whole big kitty corner three by three thing. Um, but this is no walk in the park either because we have to learn this whole new voc vocabulary. But let's go ahead and let's try to use this cofactor method. And you know what, I'm gonna rip this piece out and keep it separate so we can come back and look at this as we need to. All right, example 105.2. Oh, Grace is having a sleepy time. All right, use factors to evaluate this determinant. Here it comes. It's a three by three. Okay, we wanna solve this. We don't wanna do it using Kramer's rule because we think that's a hot mess. We wanna try this new cofactor method. In order to really see what we're doing better, I'm gonna rewrite this. So we have a total of three copies of it. So I'm not changing anything, I'm just copying. Let's hope I copy accurately. Okay. Now, what we do, this is where my words from last time will come in. We're gonna pick out any one row or column, and then we're going to cross out each entry in that row or column one at a time. What am I talking about? 
Okay, let's pick the third row. Third, sorry, that got a little squishy. We pick the third row. It told us to find the minors, pick one row or column, and then cross out each, each entry one at a time. So here, we're picking the third row. So we're gonna cross that out in each one of these. Don't worry, it'll be fine. Now, in each one of the three pictures, we're going to cross out each entry in the third row one at a time. So first I'm gonna do the first one, which is one. And I'm gonna do the second one, which is two and the third one, which is minus three. I'm gonna go back and circle those numbers. And honestly, with the crossover in them, they're kind of hard to read, aren't they? So we'll look at the other pictures to help us out. Now, what we're going to do is for each one of these three scenarios, we're going to find the cofactor and we're gonna multiply it times the element itself, okay? So what I mean by that is, just like we did last time, we're gonna find the cofactor of minus one, and then we're gonna multiply it by minus one, and that will be one part of our determinant. Then we're gonna find the cofactor of two, and we're gonna multiply it by two, and that's gonna be the second part of our determinant. And then we'll do the same thing a third time here, we'll find the cofactor of minus three, and then we'll multiply that by minus three, and then we'll add that to the same numbers that we did for the other ones, all three added together. So we're multiplying, 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 and then adding them together. That will be the value of the determinant. Again, is this easier or harder? I don't know, but we're just gonna find out. Okay, so the steps we use after we cross out, so one first we do our crossing out, then for each element, and the element are the ones that we circled. We're going to find the cofactor. And we're gonna find the, which includes the minor and the sign. and we're gonna multiply that by the element. Okay. So we're gonna multiply those two things together and that will be one of the three pieces that we add together. So let's go here. Um, so when the element here, let's make our uh, plus minus sign. We always start with a plus and we want it to be the same size as our determinant. So this is our checkerboard that we're gonna use to find the sign. So for our first element, of minus one, we're going to multiply the minor, usually write that last. The minor is two, three, one, minus two. We're just copying the four numbers that we didn't cross out. We're gonna multiply this times the sign and we find the corresponding sign, that's a plus sign, and then we're gonna multiply it by the element itself, minus one. The cofactor, which is the minor and the sign, and the element. Those three pieces make up one of the three pieces of our determinant. So now we simplify this. Okay, so this was for my element of minus one. I have to do all of this. So first I have to solve this. This would be minus four, minus four, which equals negative eight, minus four, 
minus four. Oh, I'm sorry, that's three. It's plus three. So this is minus one. That was kooky, wasn't it? Um, it's so easy to get turned around in these crazy things. Wait a minute. Minus four. Okay, no, but it's minus three. So it's minus seven, right? Because we're subtracting these two minus these two. So it's minus four minus three. That is minus seven. But this tells us to take the positive value of that. No, it doesn't. It tells us to multiply minus one times plus one, that's another way of looking at it, times minus seven. So when we multiply this together, the number that we'll add for the first part of this calculation is positive seven. We'll come back to that. That's just one of three, right? Now let's go on and do the second element. Again, I'm gonna just use the front piece of the paper so that we can compare. Okay, so now we're moving on to the element of two. And we will multiply the minor, which are the four pieces left, times the sine, which is, let's see, two is in the middle of the bottom, that's minus. I like to write a minus one. To be honest, I think that makes it a little bit easier to understand. And then we need to multiply by the element itself, which is two. All right, let's see if I can do this without screwing it up. This is positive eight minus one times one is one. So this equals seven. Yes, seven times, so this equals two times negative one times positive seven. So this equals, I'm gonna write it over here, negative 14. This is the second piece of our determinant. And then the third piece, I keep track of them by the element because that is kind of like what's in the crosshairs, right? So the element of minus three, we need the minor, the minor are the pieces left behind, minus four, one, two, three. We need the sine, this is the bottom corner, so that's positive. So again, a plus one helps me think about multiplying it. And then the element itself is minus three, I've already written that down, all right? We solve this one, this is minus 12, minus one times two is two, Uh, let's see. So that is minus 14. And so we want to multiply minus 3, positive 1 we don't need to worry about, times minus 14. This equals positive 42. And honestly, with all the pluses and minuses that fly around in these problems, I like to just go ahead and put the plus. So... Now, for our final calculation, we found the, we found the three-part combination for each one of these numbers by combining the cofactor, which is the minor and the sine, with the element itself. We multiplied those to make these three neat little packages, and now all we have to do is combine the packages. So it's plus 7, minus 14, plus 42, Let's see, that's 49 minus 14, it is 35. So, what that means is that the final value of this determinant is 35. Was this easier than drawing out two extra rows and multiplying across? And then multiplying, I just threw my pen, and then multiplying up this way? Uh, my pen just got excited at the thought of it, right? Didn't even want to think about it. Um, that's an opinion, but this is pretty straightforward, isn't it? So this is our final answer. That's how you expand a determinant by the cofactor method. 104, we have to do it one more time. 
So I'll get my instructions out of the way. We'll refer back to those if we need them. Example 105.4. Wait a minute. No, it's 0.3. That was 0.2. We have to do two more. Use cofactors to evaluate. So we know we want to draw it three times because we have to cross out different parts in each one, right? So we might as well just draw three from the beginning. And John is going to give us another nifty little shortcut. Oh, these are minuses. Okay, let's write it out. Notice there's a zero in this one. Hmm. All right, I'm just checking to see if I made any mistakes. I'll probably catch them later if I did. Okay, there are three matrices. Determinants. No, determinants the answer. If the element has a zero, if, a, if one of the elements in the matrix is a zero, that's gonna make it real easy for us because that we know when we put together that three-part bundle where we're multiplying, if there's a zero in there, the whole thing goes to zero. So we definitely want to include zero in the row of things that we cross out because that just makes our life easier. So let's once again choose the bottom row to cross out. I'm going to use blue this time. And we'll do the first one and then the second one, and then the third one. That's always the pattern. Choose one row or column to start with, and then one at a time cross out each of the elements in that row. Oh, look, I did it wrong. This needs to be here, doesn't it? Okay, this will be our first element, our second element, and our third element. Because, And then what I like to do is I keep track of it by writing down which of the elements I'm calculating each time. So the first element is zero. I don't even have to, I mean, I can write it out if I want. Oh, here, let's do our checkerboard. That's the other piece of the puzzle, right? We need to do the minor, then the sign, and then the element. So let's just play along. The minor is one minus three, two minus four. The sign, let's see, I'm down here, so that would be plus. And then the element itself is zero. Well, that just wipes everything out. And so zero is our first of the three pieces we'll add together. Love it. Okay, now we go on to the next one. This is the element that equals four. We write our minor, which is minus three, two, two minus four. We choose the corresponding sign, it's a minus one. And then the element itself is four, right? That's always the last of the bundle. The minor, the sign, the element itself. This part, remember, is called the cofactor, right? This is the cofactor. This is the element. Just to keep your terminology straight. The calculations are not super hard in this, but it is a bit of a vocabulary blur. Okay, so we need to solve this minor. That's positive 12 minus, 2 times 2 is 4, so this is 8. And we're going to multiply that by negative one and negative and positive four. So that's going to be negative 32. And then our third one, our third element in the row that we chose to cross out is this minus five. So we take the minor, 
which I've written over the top of, so it's kind of hard to see. Minus three and two, and then I'm gonna copy this. It's I know it's the middle row that I wrote over the top of one and minus three. I'll copy it from that other picture. And I'm going to choose the sign that corresponds. See, I'm in the bottom right, so that's a positive. And then the element itself is negative five. This is positive nine minus two, that equals seven. Seven times minus five is minus 35. Okay, that looks good. Plus one I can ignore. Now we've, con we've calculated the, these are, we call these the expansions, I guess. I'm not sure what you call these three individual pieces, but that's just part of the expansion and we add them zero plus minus 32 plus minus 35. This I wanted to do to remind you that we're adding these, they just happen to be negative numbers. And this equals minus 67. Yay, that's the right answer. Okay, so the moral of this lesson is when you have zeros, lean into them because they are your friends. All right, and now we have one more. They're picking up speed a little bit, aren't they? Now that we can go a little faster. I'm still gonna draw out all three, but at some point, you'll feel confident enough to hold a lot of this work in your head. But, you know, probably not today. Here is our three by three determinant. Getting a little messy, sorry. Minus three, two, one. One minus three, four, sorry. All right, and then one more time. And once again, we see there's a zero in this. So we don't wanna waste our time doing more work than we need to. So we're gonna capitalize on that zero. And this time we're going to eliminate the third column. We haven't done a column yet, have we? But we're gonna eliminate here and then we'll cross out the, we'll identify this as the first element and then the second, and then here will be our easy one, the third. Uh, I'll write our list out again, our checkerboard rather. And we remember that we are going to be making a three part package for each element. The first element is two. We'll create the minor which is whatever we didn't cross out, two, one, minus three, four. We'll choose the sign that corresponds to our element off the checkerboard. I like to write it with a one, and then we'll multiply it by the element itself, which I've written right here, but it's in the crosshairs there. All right, two times four is eight. One times minus three is minus three, but we are subtracting, it should be like that. So that becomes positive 11. And we multiply that and we get 22. We do the second element. It's minus four. Create the minor, which is minus three, one, one, four. That becomes negative 12 minus one. Oh, I'm sorry, I went out of order here. I got all excited about solving that. Cute little two by two guy. I can even sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. Okay. Uh, which sign goes with it? Let's see. We are where? We're in the middle of the far. Okay, so that's a minus one. And then our element is also a minus. Okay, so that's minus. 
13 times minus one times minus four. Wow, that's a lot of minuses. It's looking like minus 52 to me, right? One, two, three. Minus signs, I was just double checking that. Four times 13 is 52. One, two, three minus signs to end up with a minus here. All right, and then our last one. Last time I went ahead and showed you the work just to remind you of how the three pieces fit together, but we don't have to do that. As soon as we see that the element is zero, that's our answer. So now we're adding together the three different bundles that we've made. 22 plus minus 52 plus zero equals negative 30. And that's our final answer. This is my opinion about expansion by cofactors. At first, I mean, it's true of everything we do, right? At first, it seems really cumbersome and scary and what's a minor and what's this checkerboard chart and what are we multiplying together? But once you settle into the rhythm of it, as we do when we make, we do three problems, it actually becomes pretty fast and pretty easy. Solving a two by two determinant, which we're now calling a minor, is way easier than doing a three by three, right? We can do these pretty quickly. The real trick is just wrapping your head around this, how we cross things out. We choose one row or column. In this case, we, in this case, we chose the right hand column. And then we kind of highlight each element in that column or row and give it, one, it a chance to be the star of its own little show. Okay, that is the end of lesson 105. Thank you for staying with me. That was a rough one. Goodbye.